For those of you who watched my last video on setting up a NAS, you'll know that I'm in the process of upgrading my home server. And part of that is I want to be able to run proper HTTPS with SSL certificates on all of my internal servers. And to do that, I need a router that I can manually configure in quite a lot of detail to be able to serve up the DNS and, H and um, DHCP records that I need. So I bought this R5C board um, off AliExpress, um, $63 landed, and it is a really tiny little box. It's got two Ethernet ports, one for the LAN, one for the WAN. It's got an HDMI out, USB-C for power. It's got an SD card slot. It's got an antenna slot. It's got two USB 3 super, sport, super speed ports and another antenna slot on the other side. It comes with four gigs of RAM. And I think this model has got 32 gig, 32 gig MMC inside. The box is smaller than I expected. It come, comes in at just over 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters by about 30 millimeters and it's, it's like solid aluminium so it feels really nice um, let's open it up and see what's inside just one little screw and the cover pops off it's a solid aluminium plate, not plastic, it's not flimsy at all. On this side of the board we have a M.2 slot designed to take a Wi-Fi card. Um, and there's a little bit of routing on the side here to accommodate the cable for the antenna. There's a button over here for a reset. And there's a button over here for mask, which I have no idea what that is. Let's take the board out and see what's on the other side. On the other side of the board, we have uh, a header here for three little pins. I'm assuming that's a UART debug port. Um, you'll see there's a thermal pad covering the CPU. And then over here, there's a little power connector to connect a real-time clock battery. The thermal pad on the CPU connects to this big lump of aluminium, which is just part of the case. And so I think this is actually machined out of a, they call it a CNC machined case. I think this is machined out of a single block of aluminium. And so the entire case effectively acts as a heatsink. I'm really impressed with the quality of this case. Look at that little detail of how the cover just slips in. And with just a single screw to hold it in place. Getting this up and running is really easy. It comes pre-installed with a the manufacturer's version of OpenWRT. Plug in a LAN cable, not the WAN. And plug in a standard USB-C power supply. It doesn't need a lot of power. And it'll boot up and the little sys light will flash. The next thing to do is to plug the other end of the fly lead into something that you can plug into your computer. I use a USB to gigabit ethernet um, adapter and we can plug that in. Once you've done that, you can just open your browser and go to 192.168.2.1 and that'll take you into the the login and the default username when you boot this thing up is root and the password is password and you can log in 
And from here, you have all the different settings to set it up. Um, there's quite a comprehensive set of things you can fiddle with. But one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to use Friendly WRT. I want to upgrade or change this machine to standard um, Open WRT configuration, which I'm going to download, configure and download now. So we're going to go to the firmware selector on OpenWRT and we're going to select the device which is the Friendly Arm Nano Pi R5C. I'm actually going to customize the image. I don't need any of the Wi-Fi stuff because I'm not going to be using Wi-Fi. So I'm going to delete the Wi-Fi drivers from this list and so I've got a shorter list of modules that need to be installed. Once you've done that, you can request that your firmware be built. It goes ahead and builds the firmware. And you can now download the images. There's a ext4 image as well as a squashfs image. I'm just going to download both. I've selected the squashfs image. I've selected to be uploaded. And now I can just upload and write. It's erasing the flash. Okay, now that we've waited our 30 seconds, we can power it up again. And the syslight comes on. It's obviously booting. And there the LAN is active, so now we can go back to our PC and go to home page. Open WRT sits at 1.1 by default. I think OpenWRT also has no password and so we need to now set a password. But there we go, we've now shifted or reset the machine to be OpenWRT rather than the manufacturer's friendly WRT.